And Aaron talked about this earlier on. Give my friend Aaron a big cheer, by the way. Yep. He talked about this earlier on, and most of us play small. Most of us play small because we want to accommodate the needs of the other. We want to let them hold the limelight because you don't want to offend someone. You don't want to be too loud. They're having a conversation. Bill Algy Moore just turned around and said, come over here. Come and sit down and listen to what I'm going to do. That's rude, isn't it? It's rude, isn't it? They're halfway through a conversation. But I realize something that all of you, all of you have within you, and that is you have value to add if you give yourself permission. Does that make sense? Yes or no, guys? Yes? If you give yourself permission to add value, you start to add value. Imagine for a second that you were to start having those conversations that could open doors. Those conversations that could close sales. Those conversations that could allow you to actually exercise that joint venture. Those conversations that would mean that your business starts to grow, that business starts to make impact, the business starts to speak. Does that make sense? So today I want to share with you something that we've learned over the last six years at the Public Speaking Academy. Something that's transformed the lives, not just of hundreds of people, but thousands of people. And my belief is that if you apply these principles to your own business, to yourself, and more importantly, to the people that you work with, you experience magical transformation. Before I go into this, I want you to do something. I want you to stand up, and I want you to go and speak to somebody that you have not spoken to, and in 30 seconds, I want you to pitch your business in 30 seconds, three zero. Because I'm on the clock, guys. I'm going to be quick. Normally, when I do this, I'm generous, and I let you have two minutes. Today, it's going to be fast, okay? <laughs> cannot be a person you came with, cannot be a friend, cannot be a lover <laughs> at the moment, okay? So what I'd like you to do is I'd like to find a random stranger. I want you to go straight up to them, and 30-second pitch, off you go. And there's still time, there's still time, guys, yeah? And if you haven't turned around, guys, it's time to turn around, turn around, swap around, swap around, swap around. Please swap around. And count down with me, ten, nine. Eight, seven, count down with me, guys. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Anyone speaking will be pulled up on stage. It looks like Farouk and Debs. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask a question. Who, who, who actually exchanged business cards? By show of hands. Who had a useful conversation? Who thought the person was an idiot? There's a lot of love there, a lot of love. Okay, I told you there's going to be love today. Uh, here we go, there's a, there's, a, there's a couple already. So, so it's interesting, isn't it? W did anyone hear anything interesting? Any, anyone else share? Anyone, anyone actually find something out about the other person that they thought, actually, that's worth sharing? Just, by, uh, just, just raise your hand if, you've, if you heard something interesting. Audrey, yes. <laughs> interesting bit. Chris, shout out for me, Audrey.
fantastic. And, and is there anything else to add, Chris? Anything else that you'd like to add about what you what you were sharing? Okay, I think that's worth just acknowledging. Thank you very much. Get um, a round of applause for Chris. Now, it's interesting, and I'll tell you what's interesting is, where is Chris? Is Chris an expert at what he does? Do we think he's an expert? Yes or no, guys? Just shout out. Just shout out nice and loud for me, please, guys. We're going to go slightly American. I know it's the end of the day, but I want to go American because I'm getting a bit tired otherwise. So we need to go really loud. Do we think Chris is an expert? Come on, have a seat, guys. If you're, if you're standing there, have a seat. You're most welcome. Um, you, you, if you think Chris is an expert, give me a sh cheer. Yay! Okay, so Chris is speaking from where? From a place of expertise. Does that make sense? Yes or no, guys? Yes. He's speaking from a place of expertise. And what happens is most of us, and this happens to all of us in business, we speak from our own internal space of expertise. But are you website experts? Yes or no, guys? No. Just shout out for me. Are you yes or no? No. There's, there's some people going, yes, I am. I'm, uh, I'm. Okay, so, so what's, it, what's interesting is this. If Chris is able to communicate and reach you guys on your level, will he hit the trigger? Will he actually ensure that you feel interested in his message because he's speaking on your level, yes or no? Yes. More likely, is that right? Yep. So Chris, do you have a challenge when it comes to public speaking? Do you feel it's, it's kind of scary? What happens for you? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris. So, 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 so Chris, in, in 10 seconds, we're going to do something live, guys. I'm going to demonstrate why these techniques are real, why they work, and why they've helped thousands of people. I'm going to show you live, okay? I have not prepped this. Chris and I have literally just met about... No, not this. Okay, <laughs> five minutes ago. We, we, we were doing some prep earlier on. So, 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 so Chris, what I'd like to do is I'd like to literally in... 20 seconds, share what you do to these people here. We build awesome websites, we take their business to the next level by really getting higher business needs the online world without the need for office based solutions so that you can look after the website in your space and pay yourself less. Now, watch what I'm, I'm going to do something with Chris with your help, okay? You guys are answering, okay? Why do you want to refurbish your website? I'm asking you guys right now. Why do you want to? If I was giving you 20 grand worth of web redesign, which Chris is giving me, by the way, for free. I don't remember <laughs> that free. <laughs> Not yet. He just didn't realize. Because I'm doing that for free, who'd like to have a 20 grand refurb of their website? Just by show of hands. Who, just by show of hands, very seriously. 20 grand redesign. Okay, 20 grand of uh, investment's gonna go into your website, yes? And if I said to you, I'm gonna give you 20K worth of investment completely free of charge, what would you want that website to do? Just shout out, a couple of shout outs. Go on, what do you want it to do? Stand out from the rest. Nice and loud for me, Dan. SEO, it needs to be at the top of Google. You need to own Google, yes? Own Google, easy to be found. Make money, get orders, right? Who would like to have more money? By show hands, yes. Okay? Some people don't want more. Who wants, who wants less money? Who wants less money? I, I, I'll take your money off you. No. Okay. The, the thing is, the thing is you, you are in business. You need to generate revenue, whether it's to pay your staff, whether it's to actually serve more people. Stop being shy of that, guys. Okay? It's a message we share again and again. Money is not the root of all evil. It's people. I can get very rich and still be less evil. Okay? So, going back to Chris, he's going to help you serve more clients because that's what you wanted. He's going to help you get to the top of Google. That's what you wanted. He's going to help your website be more visible. That's what you wanted. Right? So, what Chris and I are going to do is remodel his pitch. Chris from, do you want to just stand over here, Chris? Okay. And where are you from, Chris? Chris? 
Rotherham. Rotherham, and where's your company? What's your company from? From Perry Solutions in Rotherham. Okay, so I went right the shout out at the back, right to where Dave and the, the other chap are talking, and you're going to shout out Chris from from your company name, okay? And then my question to you is: Would you like more clients? Would you like to get to the top of Google? Would you like to become more visible? If the answer is yes, come and speak to me. I'm going to show you exactly how you too can achieve that like all our clients. Does that make sense? In your own words. In my own words. In your own words. Oh, I was going to copy All right. everything you co said. Co copy it, copy it. Copy. <laughs> Three, two, one, give a round of applause. Chris, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> nice and loud. Hi, Chris from Impelling Solutions in Rotherham. Uh, do you want to earn more money? Do you want to be at the top of Google? And do you want to be more visible online? If you do, come have a talk to me and I'll tell you how we do it for all of our clients. Have a seat, Chris. Well done, well done. Who thought that was good? Yes or no, guys? Yeah. Who'd be interested to find out a little bit more from Chris? Yes, just by show of hands. Who'd like to find out more? Chris, have a look around. I told you it was worth it. <laughs> I told you it was worth sacrificing that space for. I told you that earlier on. There's the evidence, guys. <laughs> there's the evidence and there's the proof. What have we proven? I'm asking you guys, what have we proven just there in that demo? What do we prove? So Chris was fulfilling the customer need and therefore people want to speak to him post-event. Absolutely true. Yes, fulfilling the need, working the need. The, the message was on the customer's need. What else did we notice? What else have we learned in that little exercise? What else? You've got to press the hot buttons. Get to know your audience. Absolutely. Anything else? And the clue is, oh, the clue's not there anymore. It's okay. Short and sweet, yes, very true. More confidence a second time, yes. Oh, benefits for you, absolutely true. And what did we prove, guys? What did we actually prove just there? The value, the power of your message to... Most of us are serving people one-to-one. -one. The minute you start to serve one to many, your world starts to change. Does that make sense? Most of us are terrified when it comes to standing on a stage and doing this, or do so in a way where we do play small, and think that the speaker should be somebody else. The speaker should be somebody who's just talented, or they were born confident, or they were born to be on stage. Most of us feel that. Who here on some level feels that they can't communicate to their potential on stage? Well, it could be here, it could be that. So the rest of you can't improve, yeah? <laughs> Or my hand just can't go up. Okay. <laughs> the reality is all of us can. And the reality is, and we've proven again and again, that all of us have the power to be powerful on stage. We have that potential. I'm asking you a quick question. Was, was Bilal Jamil, I'm the CEO of Public Speaking Academy, I teach thousands of people how to become speakers in their business area. And I'm going to ask you the question, do I appear shy? Yes or no? I am, I promise you. I promise you. Am I scared or am I nervous or apprehensive? Am I holding back? Am I playing small in any way? No. Was I always this way? Was I born this way? I was born crying. I'm a human being. I'm vulnerable. I'm gentle. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. And in fact, I joke and I, I kind of joke about it, but the reality is that was me. That was me for most of my life in my career. I was a kind of individual who'd sit at a boardroom meeting in a meeting room in front of staff, and I would shrivel up and I would keep my message within me. Or if I did share, if I was forced to share, I would stutter, I would stammer, I'd forget my words, and I'd let everyone else control that space. Does that make sense? And in fact, there was a moment in my life, which was a turnaround moment, when I collapsed in front of an audience of 80 people who were my staff members. It was a new managerial post. They looked me in the eye. Somebody in the front row looked to the person next to them and said, who is this idiot? And I did think to myself, who is this idiot? I realized they're looking at me. 
because at that point in my life, I screw up so badly that the people in the audience start to walk out. And they're my staff. And I walk to the gents, I close the door, I lock the cubicle door, and I'm in tears. Because at that point, at that point, at that point, everything that my parents had worked for, had emigrated to this country, had left their friends and family and their brothers and sisters, at that point, in that cubicle, I knew that I'd screwed my career up. At that point, I knew that this problem that I was holding, playing small, hiding my message, not having the confidence to share, screwed me up. Next six months, every single day, I'd walk into that workplace and people would gossip. They would talk over me. I was a nervous wreck. And my colleague does a leaving speech, as it happens for me. He did a bloody good speech. And I thought, I should be like that. There was no way I could do it. And it took me 15 years, guys, 15, one, five, to uncover a unique approach through practice, through hard work, through mentorship, through training, through coaching, through all those processes that take time to uncover my own personal gift. Does that make sense, guys? And it unlocked a passion within me, which to this day, at Public Speaking Academy, we serve individuals, businesses, people to find their voice, to share their story, to empower. And with God's grace, we've served thousands of people around the world to this day. And when Tony gave me this opportunity today, I thought to myself, what can I share? What should I share? Because I coach people one-to-one -one around the world. They fly into the UK and they come to Sheffield. They come to the home of public speaking. And I help them find their message. TED speakers, who's heard of TED? Yeah? Ministers from government. Who's heard of those people called MPs? <laughs> I coach them, believe it or not. I, Bilal Jamil, the guy who could not speak, coaches them. <laughs> I suppose what I want to share with you today, and I'm going to give you some methods and techniques, because I, because I believe, as, as Chris proved right at the very beginning, if you are not communicating your message, you are leaving your legacy behind. Les Brown talks about, Les Brown's a brilliant motivational speaker, one of my personal mentors, and he talks about if you want to find motivation, go to the graveyard and hear the stories that were not told, the dreams that were not realized, the messages that were buried six foot under. And that's how most people live their lives. They leave their brilliance inside of them. Does that make sense? And uh, something I, 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 I am fascinated by is, is how people, and, and I'm, not, I'm not knocking the people over here, okay? I am. Okay. I'm not knocking them. But they had an opportunity to hear this. This is the same method that I teach our top-end speakers, okay? I'm going to teach you today. I'm going to share this because you gave me the dignity to turn up. You gave me the dignity to listen to me. I'm going to give you a shed load of value. I want you to literally just grab your notepads, maybe a phone. I'm going to go straight to some content. Is that okay? Yes or no, guys? Yes? yes. Okay, so I'm going to share something with you which you can apply immediately. You can literally apply today. Now, we call ourselves the fourth emergency service for a reason because people call us up before they got a keynote speech. So people are coming up here and they need to speak and they will call us up and say, look, I've got a keynote speech. I'm training on Monday. I'm doing this and I need to get brilliant. How do I do it, Bill? I say, come to speak to me for two, two days on the weekend and I will sort it out for you. Have you got 10 grand? And then they say, no. <laughs> but some people will. And that's why it's such a valuable tool, because if you learn, as our friend Chris did, learn to share your message brilliantly, your world starts to change. And those, those same people we're talking about, the X Factor team, flew into Sheffield and then flew out to Australia, and they won 10 million worth of contracts. I think that was money, money well, well spent, okay? It's an ROI. You've got to ask yourself the question, are you worth it? So here's what we talk about today. When you go on stage... What happens classically to, you, to your brain? I'm going to shout out for me. Let's go quick. Let's go quick, guys. What happens when you are on stage? What happens to your brain and your thinking patterns? Just shout out, please, guys. What happens? 
blank, panic, thinking about yourself, anything else? Anything else? Your mouth dries up, you start to stutter and stammer. Whose heart starts to race? Who's, uh, whose heart starts to race? Who gets those palpitations? Yeah? Okay, so we're going to deal with that, and I'm going to give you a method we call CPR. Can you repeat that? C? Right, let's try that again. C? This is a method called CPR for public speakers, okay? So you're not going to forget it. It's very simple. You notice I've got no slides there because I'm going to tell you what this is. The C is your method of controlling your nerves and anxiety before and during your talk. Because an audience does what, guys? What does an audience do when they sit down? What happens? What happens? Imagine you're standing here and you're facing your audience. What happens to you as a speaker as you look to your audience? What are you thinking? Shout out for me. Well, the audience any good or am I any good? Both ways. So you're starting to ask questions, yeah? What else are you thinking as a speaker? If I invited you up here and you're speaking to an audience, what am I doing as a speaker? I'm passing what? Passing, don't say passing wind. Passing? Information. Passing information, but I'm passing something else. I'm passing judgment onto my audience. I'm judging you guys because you guys are sat there like this and I'm thinking these people are bored. These people are uninterested. Does that make sense, guys? Yes? You start to make judgments. Does that make sense? Somebody might be, I don't know, for example, they might be following your Twitter feed. They might be checking your Facebook feed. They might be, they might be, this, this might be their concentration space. Does that make sense? Well, then I make an assumption that that person does not like me because I'm the speaker. That person looks uncomfortable. That person's moved from their chair. So I'm making judgment. Does that make sense? Yes or no? I become Darren Brown up here. I start to read your mind. That person hates me. He's, he's pointing the camera on me because he wants to take the mick out of me later on. Someone's nod nodding on you. That's true. But does that make sense? Because we start to become mind readers up on stage. And the only way you can do and you can bypass this is if you have the ability to ask what? Ask. Shout it out for me nice and loud. Ask. Questions. questions. You start to engage your audience. You start to connect with them. And what that does is the connection brings your audience to you. And also, selfishly as a speaker, it helps you relax. Another method that you can use to connect with your audience. What have you noticed? Do, what did I do today when I started this talk? What did I do to connect with you guys? What did I do? Just shout out, guys. I got you involved. There was a level. And how did I do that, Dan? What did I do? So there was, an, there was an activity immediately. Yeah, do, do we remember? Those of us who didn't join in earlier on, those of us who joined us just now, you've, you've missed a really good activity because we got you to talk to each other. We got people to pitch to each other. People work from self-interest. Remember that, okay? Do write that down. If you can understand the self-interest of the audience and you work towards them, you can change the way they feel. Very, very powerful. You can join us if you want. If you're, if you're attracted to this talk, come and have a seat. Okay, thank you. Can everyone shout to this lady? Please have a seat. Please have, Please have a seat. Please have a seat. She's just looking. She goes, I don't like you. Okay, that's okay. We, we'll, we'll live with that. So, so basically, it's not about being popular, as, you can demo as I demonstrated live. It's about, it's about, and a serious point is, it's about allowing you to connect. So asking questions, getting interactions going. When I look at you, I do what? When I look at you, what do I do? I make, I make eye contact. I actually look towards that person. I nod, and they then do what? They respond. They respond. Call response. If you get a response, you feel like you're alive. If I'm in, um, as an audience, why do you think audiences feel they're invisible? Why do you think the person at the back thinks that they're invisible, but I can see them? Why do, why, why do people, no, not to put you on the spot there, not to put you, everyone looks back. <laughs> why do people feel they're invisible? Why? Because in school, we are conditioned by our schooling system to put our hand up before we speak. We are made to feel invisible from our very, very beginning in the education system, and we continue going about our business invisible. Therefore, when you're in an audience, you guys are conditioned to think, Bilal cannot see us, so I can sit back and just go, oh, it's boring. Does that make sense? But the reality is if I connect, you haven't got a chance. I am now bringing you in. Does that make sense, yes? yes. Okay, so first element, the C, connect. 
When you're on stage, you need to control your nerves. You're speaking, you're articulating your message, you're sharing it, and your brain is going to mush. When you're nervous, you start to speak faster. When you're nervous, you start to stutter and stammer. When you're nervous, you lose your train of... Come on, guys, I need you to be with me. When, you, when you're nervous... You lose your train of? Okay, so one of the ways, and you can come and have a seat as well, please. Please, please. No, I, I'm not. No, no. Okay. So you, you would basically lose your train of thought. So one of the mechanisms you need to use is professional pace. Change your pace, and you will change the way you come across. It doesn't mean you just slow down. You'll notice today that I've changed my pace a number of times. But what does a changing your pace do? What does it do for the audience? Just, just shout out, guys. It energizes the audience. What else does it do? Keeps them engaged. Isn't it? If, if I was just speaking like this, okay, then one of the policies that we have in government right now is to bore you to tears, okay? And just a monotone. And is that okay? Are you engaged? Someone's gone into a journey of self-discovery over there. Um, completely <laughs> bored, and I understand that. Because the monotone kills it. So the pace is something that keeps you engaged. What else is controlling your pace do? If I'm nervous, what happens to my breathing, guys? What happens to my breathing? Faster and faster and faster. And if I then use the Martin Luther King, I have a dream. I have a dream. What am I doing, guys? What am I doing? I'm extending the words. I'm using a technique to load up the words. Use exaggeration. Use voice control. When you change your pace, you are forcing your breathing to change. I can't come up on stage and take a deep breath and go, I'm uh, Bilal, Jamil from Public, Speaking Academy. Thank you. I'll have a round of applause for that. Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't do that, guys. I have to change my pace to control my breathing. My bre breathing is controlled through professional pace. It allows me the time to space and to think about my words. More importantly, it allows me to calm down whilst I'm on stage, control my nervous energy. And something has a number of different tools. It helps you engage in line with the connection element. So controlling through connection. Secondly, control your pace. That will help you control your nerves and find your thoughts. Who's gone blank on stage by show of hands? Who feels they go blank when they, yep, okay, if you go blank, the pacing starts to help you. And the final element is R, which is to keep it real. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be Obama. Don't try to be Winston Churchill. Don't try to be Bill Al Jamil. Notice how I put the sequence together. Do you like that? <laughs> if you are speaking from your truth, Whatever that is, your expertise. Chris is an expert in web development. He's an expert in tech. He speaks from his truth. Therefore, we buy into it. It's credible. It's a place of service. And does he appear like he's speaking from the heart? Yes or no, guys? He's passionate about it. He's real about it. Too many people in business pretend to be something they're not. Speak from your truth. The truth sets you free, guys. Okay? And it's on that point. It's at that point I'm going to pause. And we're going to let you understand that the CPR method is there for you to use, to enjoy, to apply. But we are the A and E of professional speaking. And the A stands for action. Because if I give you the CPR method and you don't action it, you might as well watch these senders of Coronation Street. Can everyone make the noise? Because it's just a Jack and Ori story. You need to apply this, put it in action in order to make it happen. And what does the E stand for, Bilal? It stands for environment. Because with the right environment, you start to action the changes. If you want to go to the gym, you want to get fit, go to the gym. If you want to become educated, go into a library, go to university. If you want to become a speaker, come to Public Speaking Academy. CPR, guys, it's my gift to you. Go out, share your message. 
And guess what? Every single one of you has a message within you. And if you don't serve it, you're not serving the people who need your business, your service, your message. Go out and be you guys. Go out and be you and love your message. Thank you very much. Peace, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.